Sidi, just kidding. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rozi, uh, my master sifu in in halal. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, and thank you, uh, organizer, uh, for the opportunity for me to present today. Yeah, around uh, fifty minutes, inshallah. All right, uh, give me some time to share my slide presentation. Okay. Uh, so can you guys see my slide presentation? Yes, but uh, uh, you need to do a presentation show. Uh, okay, sure, sure. Okay, how about now? Uh, yes. Okay. Right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Salatu wassalamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-bursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Qala rabbi shrah li sadri wa yisir li amri. Wa ahlul uqlatan min lisani yafahu qawli amma ba'a. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good afternoon. Uh, so my name is Muhammad Jabal bin Abdul Rahim. You can call me Jabal. I'm representing uh, Surunai. I'm a head of Hala Center of Excellence in Surunai. Where basically Surunai involved uh, in two area uh, in in halal one is uh, we do training and coaching for halal certification and uh, we don't limit ourselves on halal certification but we also involve in uh, developing uh, system you know uh, to allow um, uh, a certification body uh, to manage the application to allow uh, a consumer to assess information about the halal certified product and the company and also to allow um, authority to you know or industry to manage or maintain their halal integrity all right so um okay i think uh, a lot of things has been covered uh, by the previous uh, speaker uh, however uh, let me put my point here uh, you know, uh, we have uh, um, a lot of challenges, uh, whether it's an ethical issue, we have uh, you know, an ethical issue, we have a technical issue. So uh, let me put my point here. Uh, we started, uh, Surunai, we started the journey as a halal around uh, 16 years ago. Me, myself, I started in, in, in halal journey like 16 years ago as a halal uh, auditor. And then I continue my journey as a halal coach or halal trainer, right? So um, what we can see is halal started as, um, you know, one of the instruction in Sharia law, one of the obligation in Sharia Islamia. But it is evolved um, from Muslim responsible to become market needs, you know, uh, we halal certification, halal, you know, halal per se is not just a, only an obligation or, or responsible as a Muslim. So now it's become a market need or it's become a trend in the market. Yeah? So uh, in this world, halal industry is fragmented. Why I call it fragmented? Because we are divided by country and uh, every country, they have their own requirement. Uh, we are also divided by the authority. We are divided by the legal requirement and even by different certification body where you know sometimes um, countries uh, or certification body, they have uh, their own style on managing their halal application. All right. So as time goes by, people is more depending on halal logo instead of understanding the soul or, or the true meaning of halal. So we depend on halal logo. Yeah. So halal logo uh, representing halal assurance and make it sellable. Yeah. Product with halal logo uh, without you know whether it's, it's understandable uh, halal or not. You know, as long as there is a logo, then we can buy. We can purchase it. Yeah. So it's become a tools of marketing, yeah, emblem of trust on hygiene and many more, yeah. So this is that uh something that we are afraid of. People don't really understand about halal, but they depend a lot on halal or instead of you know uh uh a trust on the on Sharia. Now we trust on the local, yeah. Uh, all right. So it is also become an uh, opportunity for the halal villain, yeah. To produce fake halal product, fake halal logo, or even fake uh, certification body. Uh, and all these actions considered as unethical. So let me share a little bit on the what happened in the market. I think most of the thing has been covered uh, in the in the previous uh, presentation. Yeah. So uh all right. 
so fake halal is a global issue yeah it's not just happening in malaysia but it's all happening all over the world yeah um as uh, surunai we experience we have an experience work together with interpol you know just to combat on the halal fake uh, product yeah okay so this is on the fake halal logo you just need to spend around one dollar or two dollar you know to buy to create to purchase a halal logo or you don't you, uh, there is uh, no effort needed you know to edit the certificate or make it certificate to look uh, on your to look like uh, uh, you know genuine or legit certification all right and then we have issue with the misuse of the halal term yeah as you can see here um, some people they don't put halal but they put no pork no pig no swine or uh, what they did is they put uh, uh, emblem that related to muslim like like kuba masjid they put an islamic name or islamic decoration yeah just to attract muslim consumer all right and then we have another issue where doubtful ingredient is commonly used in production so what is doubtful ingredients here so okay we are talking about the food additive yeah food additive consists of the um a uh, coloring consists of stabilizer consists of antioxidants yeah and and many more and uh, there is a lot of food additive and none of it is representing the status of halal or non halal also that is an issue yeah and all this um, food uh, additive it may derive from various um, uh, sources uh, for example, it may be uh, sources from the plant. It may uh, resource from the uh, animal. And uh, when we talk about uh, animal, it may be derived from halal animal or non-halal animal. Okay, again, none of the numbers is representing halal status. That's why uh, when we talk about the doubtful ingredients, we are referring to the food, food additive that um, we are quite... Um, uncertain yeah about the status of the ingredient itself yeah all right and then yeah so instead of doubtful ingredients we're also having a problem with non-halal ingredients uh okay so this is uh, something um uh, happening in malaysia where you know, balsamic vinegar is commonly used yeah but uh, it is stated in some of the label that uh, balsamic vinegar uh, contain um, wine yeah so uh, under malaysian fatwa it is considered as non non halal all right and then we also have an issue with weak process control of the place where you know, most of the ingredient is halal for example like dried shrimp dried uh, fish or even egg yeah it's halal we know it's halal however the place the condition of the places is so terrible yeah they they do practice good hygiene practice uh, they allow uh, you know, for example they dry the, the the shrimp or the the, the fish traditionally in, in open air and allow a pest or even dog you no know, to take care of the shrimp or fish or whatever seafood it is yeah so again whether even even though the, the product is halal the ingredient is halal but sometimes because is there is no element of toy ban now uh, things that are halal turn into non non halal or haram all right, and we also have uh, no or weak halal governance. Uh, this concern is especially, especially for non-Muslim or Muslim minority countries where they don't have a specific act or law to protect the halal industry stakeholders. So, um, you know, sometimes it's also become an unclear scope of certification or policy. You know, uh, sometimes they don't even have uh, agencies' roles or testing facilities to accommodate on halal needs. Yeah, and it is also uh, related to the limited organizational capacity and resources. Sometimes they have the halal certification body or authority, but the uh, certification body and this authority they don't have a certain competency needed. Yeah. All right, and uh, and then we have an issue with varying degree of understanding product evaluation method and process. Some said, okay, this method is um, uh, acceptable, and some said this method is not acceptable. Uh, another issue, yeah. And then needs for computer resources such as facilities, manpower, etc. Yeah. 
And then uh, uh, this is uh, something that lead to uh, digitalization where ineffective way to trace halal product information. So remember everyone, uh, like I said earlier, uh, halal was instructed 1,500 years ago and it is part of the Sharia law. Yeah, uh, but um, over the years until now, instead of understanding the needs of halal, understand the, the 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 meaning or the soul of halal, now we depend a lot on the halal halal go with uh, because of many reasons. Yeah, so uh, because of that, that uh, we have uh, a lot of certification body. It was uh, said that we have more than four hundred certification body all over the world. Uh -huh, yeah, we have four hundred certification body all over the world. But 90% of them do not have any system and are manually processing all halal application from members. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means they don't manage their data or information properly. Yeah. For example, in Malaysia, we recognize uh, 84 certification body. But unfortunately, yeah, uh, the status of this active for certification body uh, is unknown. I mean, what I mean is uh, product that certified by them, uh, we don't have access uh, to the information. So why? Why? Because we don't have a proper platform to store the data. Uh, I think at the first place, we don't have a proper platform to manage the application. Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, this is also some of the challenges where uh, some of the countries uh, uh, they recognize other certification body. Yeah, some of the countries uh, they don't recognize uh, each other. Yeah, and uh, some certification body they only recognize other certification body with a proper ISO seventeen or sixty five accreditation. Right, and uh, this is the best part where countries without any halal acts or restriction, yeah. Uh, so commonly, this country is uh, known among non-Muslim country, but they have a Muslim high Muslim population where the needs of halal product is still there. Yeah. All right. So, uh, okay. Uh, so um, we always uh, watch in the movie. You know, um, if there is a villain, yeah. And uh, so hero hero will be born and rise to protect justice. So here we are. Uh, you know we 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 have discussed about the uh, issues uh, happened by the uh, halal villain. Yeah, they they do they they, they create uh, halal a fake halal logo, fake halal product, and many more. So we want to be the hero, halal hero. So that's why we come up with the solution. Yeah, All right. Halal as the focus point. Halal has steadily grown due to an increase of Muslim population globally and acceptance from the non-Muslim due to its profitability, quality assurance, health factor, and ethical awareness. All right. However, COVID-19. Uh, all right. Why COVID-19? Because COVID-19 is the, the one or the main reason it accelerates the needs of halal digitalization. You know, we have been uh, facing the, the, the COVID-19 19, I mean, uh, I think uh, around uh, more than a year, you know, but we still need to consume halal food. You know? So people, um, uh, for example, halal executive or halal compliance officer, uh, even though they are staying at home, they still need to take care of halal matters. But how? Yeah. So that's why uh, one of the reason halal digitalization, uh, you know, accelerated and it's the right time for us to introduce ourselves. Yeah. All right. So despite the global pandemic, digital halal ecosystem makes any future unprecedented disaster or, or pandemic bearable with such impeccable halal connectivity and traceability it provides. So this is our technology. Uh, as you can see here, we uh, this is actually a pillar of halal ecosystem or a pillar uh, for halal industry to known as a halal industry. There is no halal industry without halal certificate body or authority there is no halal industry without uh, industry and there is no halal industry without consumer so what we develop is number one we have to you know accommodate the needs of the halal certification body where this halal certification body are managing application from the industry so industry need to do application through the system that we call as a vh smart 
and the uh, application will be received by authority or certification body through CBMS. And end of the day, uh, once all the process is completed, the information and all the data uh, will uh, should be accessible to a uh, consumer through Verify Halal. Yeah. So currently, Verify Halal is uh, available free. Uh, and uh, you, we, I am welcome for everyone to use Verify Hala. It's not just about uh, apps that uh, you know provide uh, free information on the Hala certified company, but uh, it's more than that. Yeah, we have a feature for the company you know to do the self evaluation before submitting the application and many more. Yeah, uh, I think uh, in short, uh, that's all about the uh, you know digitalization and unethical issue. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity. Inshallah, uh, we we'll see you again. So I, you know, I uh, pass the mic back to our host, uh, Miss Rosie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Jabal. Um, insightful presentation. So you know, you still uh, have a great presentation, even though second last.